All right, one more show and tell for the day. I'm doing these types of things because there's a lot of these publications or different types of, I don't know, whatever rubber stamping entities that once they're gone, it was like there is zero information uh, available out there, even though some of these entities were fairly large. Um, now, this magazine, I don't recall it all, but I happen to have it in my collection here. You know, you, 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 if you're a manufacturer, you used to get... Um, different publications and things like that coming through your mail. They'd be, you know, uh, they'd be, you know, soliciting um, things like advertisements in them or just, you know, simply to get that distribution out there. But I don't recall this one. I was kind of doing a flip through. I probably, you know, flipped through it at one point in time and just set it down. This is from, from what I can make of it, 1994. I, I don't see any type of information on here and a lot of times you look on the inside here the page like the first page or something like that and it would mention you know who the uh, publisher was you know who the editor was etc i don't see anything like that anywhere in here uh, i don't know i didn't take a you know real in-depth look at it but let's take a look and see what this is i think this was an industry type of um publication, you know, not really for the general public, but um, like sources and things like that. From what I can make of it, I don't know. Uh, maybe it would be sent out to retailers, you know, and these would be the types of things that you would be buying for your stores. I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, so industry could be retailers and manufacturers, you know, more than just the general public, because you see these you know, things like this, uh, Louis Lind here, you know, they would be supplying um, things like the cushions, the raw materials to make your rubber stamps right here. I was looking at this right here, Aero Art out of New York, create a pad art system. So this is pretty early on in the um, the raised die pad um, type of era. And this is probably not a raised die pad right here because I think what they're saying right here with these little, you know, kind of split fountain types of um, uh, color transitions right here is that you can make your own pad so here's a blank pad down here and then here's these bottles of ink that you would you know add in these types of blank pads and you would have your rainbow pad to stamp out your uh, imagery in so you used to see rainbow pads out there and but they were recessed so your stamp had to fit within the confines of that pad of course otherwise you know that ink would run off so that was the dilemma with um, pads back in the day until someone figured out, okay, let's do a raised pad and let's make that ink thicker so it's not just going to pour out the edges, you know, of your pad. So, um, I don't know, it was interesting seeing that one there. I hadn't heard about that. Now, I heard of uh, Louis Melinde here. Back when you're, you know, you're, if you're going to start your own rubber stamp company, there were about probably five suppliers for raw materials, including things like, you know, the vulcanizing machines and that type of thing. So speaking of vulcanizers, here's this carver right here that was out of Indiana. That's the type of machine right there to make your, um, you need to put your mold on and to press your rubber from. Looks like this is like a hydraulic type of thing where you pull it down or something like that. Not all uh, vulcanizers look like that, but, um, I think some are auto ones too or something like that, but that those little things up there probably talk about, you know, the pressure and maybe the temperature or something like that. But you put your uh, mold in there or you put your magnesium plate in there with your mold, your, your Bakelite or matrix, and you do that a certain temperature. And then when you're cooking rubber and they're impressing your rubber from it, it's probably a completely different uh, temperature. I've never done that before. Okay, so look at this. So this is, there's, I don't know where this is out of. So it's worldwide, okay? So it's talking about, here's a store or company that's in England. And here's the oldest stamp shop right here. And this is in um, York, okay? So, you know, England. Uh, this is a store right here that's in South Africa, which is pretty interesting. If this is 1994, that's going really way back, you know, with, um, you know, stamping as a hobby type of thing, you know, craft, craft stamping. Um, but they're talking about stamping down under here. So, you know, when, when stamping took off, it took off in a hurry. So, um, 
there was just an explosion of um, stamps and things like that. But, you know, if we're talking about a store in South Africa at this point in time, um, that is really early for, you know, country, you know, certain countries like that. So I find that this is pretty interesting right here that it's going into, you know, different areas. So this is stamper stamping all over the globe here. Um, let's see. Okay. This is just talking about California right here, you know, stamping in the U S but especially different areas of the U S you didn't see stamping done in certain areas. I mean, it was getting some really good momentum, but you saw it in different pockets, like a lot of, um, stamping going on on the West coast, um, like, you know, Southern California and then Washington, and then maybe Oregon after that, I'm not sure. And you saw these little spot things like in different areas around the country, but it wasn't like permeating the, you know, those areas, there might've been like a store or two. First class uh, stamps, Norfolk right here. This is pretty interesting to me because these are, anytime you had um, these types of printed color labels like that on a stamp, that was a pretty significant type of um, feature for a rubber stamp, getting these, um, color labels like this made was not cheap and you had to have you know many of them made up so i don't know maybe they were supplying you know the uk and europe or something like that but um i don't know they might have been you know shipping you know people might have been carrying their um, things out here in the u.s but when you talk about wood mounted rubber stamps and the cost of um shipping those um, you know, it's always been an expensive thing, you know, when you talk about something heavy and bulky. So, um, and it looks like they, I don't know if these were Winnie the Pooh types of, uh, images too. I'm not sure right here, but if they were doing license, yeah, there's Winnie the Pooh right there. So these were licensed images too. So, you know, we're talking about a pretty significant, um, operation here. I hadn't heard of them again because, you know, I'm out here in the U S and, you know, I'm not a retail store ordering those types of things, but this is kind of interesting to me, the A to Z of art stampers here. So I don't know what these are right here. I don't know if these were, you know, rubber stamp retailers and manufacturers or something like that, but I took a look down here and I think I did see stampscapes in here somewhere, um, but I don't know where they would have got their information yes stampscapes usa california right here uh, and i'm not sure what this would be for in, in terms of a reference just listing the names of them like that but pre-internet so i have no idea where they were getting this information from you know i take it it was um yeah so here's lady and the stamp they, they were in um Orange, California, or Tusk, or something like that. It, they were pretty close to me. I taught over there once or twice at that store, but um, yeah, I don't know where they would have got that type of information. Maybe rubber stamp manners or something like that, but this seems a little bit more extensive than that, so uh, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so in my last uh, um, flip through, you know, show until I was talking about rubber, um, stamp oasis. So here's Jim from stamp oasis right here. And they were the ones that put on that, uh, those conventions out there. So they're probably talking about their store and everything like that. when they started it, I think they started it back in like 91 or two or something like that. And it might, it could have been 93, but I flew out there one time from Los Angeles. I took all my workshop stamps in this one bag um, out there and just taught in the afternoon. And I flew back like that night. Uh, it was pretty crazy. That's the only time I ever did something like that. But, you know, Las Vegas from Los Angeles is not that far of a, uh, flight. I don't know. It's probably under an hour or something like that. But, um, I don't know. That one, I, I don't remember the classes. I remember teaching out there with Jim and Audrey and meeting them, and that was awesome. They were really great people. Um, but um, I remember we went out to eat, and they were, I was saying, I probably should get to the airport. And um, they were saying, nah, you know, we got plenty of time and stuff like that. And they got me there. Uh, I was talking about that like an hour and a half to go, and, you know, 
I don't know. I, I, I believe them. You know, I wasn't going to say, hey, you know, you don't know what you're talking about or something like that. But I remember they got me to the airport. And I think it was like under like a half an hour before the flight took off. It, it might have been 20 minutes or something like that. But I checked my bag and they said, well, you know, you might get on the plane. I'm not sure if uh, your bag will make it. And I was like, oh, my God. So, you know, I had all my demo stamps in there for my workshops. And I remember just envisioning O.J. Simpson and that Hertz had jumping over things and running through the airport. But that was me. I was just running and I was like drenched in sweat by the time I got to the gate and I just got there. But miraculously, my bag was on there, too. So I don't know. Yeah, I was really impressed with the uh, the airport there. Hero Arts here. So here's another, see, Art Stamper's listing right here. Oh, here's another Vulcanizer right here. Jackson Marking. So they're, they're still in business. I think they have the website, like, rubber-stamps.com or something like that. But if you're ever looking for materials like... Um, like gray cling foam, you know, mounting uh, material or anything like that. You can get it from them. You can get that type of thing from things like Amazon too. But um, um, I don't know if you look, you're looking for big sheets or something like that, or multiple sheets. You can look for uh, Jackson Mark. And there's no website listed here. This is all pre-internet right here. But so this is Art Stampers listing. So okay, this identifies the activity of dealers and suppliers throughout the listings. We have Australia on here with certain designations. Okay, so this is going through, so look at this, Africa, Cape Town right here, Johannesburg, you know what I mean? I, I have no idea where they got all of these um, listings from for this um, publication, but Canada, I'm not quite sure how they're doing it after, you know, the, um, it, it's not alphabetical. And it, I don't know if it's by city. I don't think it is. But you have England, you know, the UK, a um, lot in England here. This whole page, you have France, the Netherlands, Germany, Scotland, okay. Anchorage, Alaska, okay, this is where the U.S., United Arab Emirates, you know, Thailand. Where do they get this type of information from? I'll, I have zero idea, especially, you know, in 94. But look at this a little advertisement right here. Fridge magnet kits for your rubber stamp art. Send, uh, you know, L-S-A-S-E, self-addressed stamped envelope, to magnet kit. <laughs> wholesale retail you know but i see these different cities in here you know norwalk irvine laguna you know what i mean and i recognize um a lot of these companies and stores kind of um but they have all of them in here you know c spot run you know in the farmer's market in la you know here's San, San Diego, where i live now uh, but here's there's one listing in San Diego. So, like I said, I don't know how they were doing it. Like I said, it's not by, it's not alphabetical, and it's not by, um, uh, like, city or anything like that, as far as I can make out. Yeah, here's San Jose right here, and there's San Francisco over here with Lancaster in the middle. So I'm guessing they were just kind of listing them. You know what I mean? They didn't, you know, I don't know what software they were doing, you know, to publish this, you know, but there's that moving something like this from over here wasn't as easy back then i'm guessing they might have been doing i don't know typesetting too I, I don't know i have no idea leavenworth jackson right there what is this pepperdine wants to mold your rubber master plates and stuff call it this is colorado i've never heard of them stamp inc in santa maria were they already there at that point in time uh huh but look at this right here okay so this is the um different photographs from um different shoes i'm guessing that this was all okay yeah this was all the um carson 
convention right here. So they said, but they put right here, uh, rubber stamp convention in Carson City. It's not really Carson City. It's just Carson, California. So Carson City is a city in Nevada. So sometimes people would thought, okay, you know, they thought, you know, the Carson show was Carson City in Nevada, um, but it wasn't. But I see, you know, some uh, the vendors right here, uh, stamps in motion, good stamp, stamp goods. Always, I have several stamps from them. Here's Alex Stampings, Carlos, Viva Las Vegas stamps. Uh, had a booth there. That's not really Elvis right there, but a cutout. Spud World. I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was um, oh, those stamps that were. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of that stamp company that was made. They were kind of like sponge stamps, I think, to stamp on like interiors like walls and things like that but look at this little cartoon right here the adventures of stamper man for this publication this took a lot of work right here and also this is getting this color printing like that that is really expensive so let me see here so that page is right here there might be another page back here so see this page right here is um, in color because it's the center fold out like that. But this page right here is right here. Yeah, so here's this other page right here. So the way you fold this right here, see this page right here is the same piece of paper as this one. So that's all like single page coloring. But since it's folded here, it shows up right back here. But it's just interesting to me that this publication like this you know that's um you know they would get, they would pay for you know this whole cartoon to be made like this and uh you know this type of color printing unless the guy that was doing it or you know whoever was doing it was one of those things where it was um you know they they saw themselves as like a comic book illustrator or something like that so they were kind of fulfilling that you know thing right you know that little I don't know, whatever, you know, dream of becoming a, you know, a comic book artist or something like that. That would be kind of interesting and pretty cool. But when now it's time, now it's your turn to save the world with your own personal collection of art stamps featuring your favorite hero, Stamper Man. Are you kidding me? So... I'm looking right here to see if there's a full set of stamps. I'm guessing, oh, here it is right here. Okay, I didn't even read down here. So there's all these stamps right here of Stamper Man, right? I'd be interesting if anyone, I'll put that, I'll tag that Stamper Man, but I'd be interested to see if anyone has these images i mean they're probably much larger but those are the ones there um for uh for sale so some um manufacturers uh making those which is pretty cool but i i don't know i never saw them like in any type of publication or anything like that poly diam poly diam i don't know i'm butchering that name uh london england so these are their um plate making system right here from liquid okay this is a photopolymer plate right here okay so some people make stamps from that no one was doing that at the time though so the, but they might make their matrix mold from photopolymer and then they're pressing their rubber from that photopolymer um mold okay the, i i don't do that because those molds don't last very long you know, photopolymer. I don't know how many prints you can make from it. I, I think it's cheaper though to do that. But you just, if you're doing a lot of um, sheets of rubber from one mold, I think there was a, it degrades over time. So, you know, um, the impressions, the, you know, the, the rubber quality from one to whatever, you know, however long that lifespan is, I think it changes over time. Um, more, uh, you know, sources. I was going to look through here and try to find uh, Stampscapes. I don't know, I didn't bother doing that. But look at this here, London Host Stampers. So first UK Rubber Stampers exhibition and show. Okay, so they were, 
there are conventions out there. I think it was in Germany, the first one. I think it was by Hein Design. I, I don't know what the name of that show was, but here you have a UT, UK show here, and it was held at the, um, the Strand Palace Hotel in London, England. Did you attend that show? <laughs> Did anyone attend that show? Here's Rubber Stamper's World that they were advertising. It was interesting to see that they were advertising their magazine in this piece right here. I just did a, you know, show and tell make, uh, flip through that Gregory Manufacturing Company. I don't think I ever got any of my wood mounts from that company, but I, I certainly heard of them. And here's Events. Now, yeah, okay, so Events 1994. San Mateo, let me see. Oh, there's National Art Materials Trade Association. Okay, so that was not, um, you know, something just for the public for art stamping. Okay. Midwest Rubber Rama, Bonnie Stamping Station. Hmm. Rubber Stamp Frenzy, Burbank. Never heard of that show. Uh, rubber Stamp Festival, San Jose. Okay. And Quarter Moon. I'm looking here if there's European rubber stamp, Nice, France. That had to be, that couldn't have been the hobby of stamping in France. France has never been like the hotbed of, you know, the hobby of rubber stamping. So that must have been just like for the business things of rubber stamps. I'm guessing, I don't know, I could be mistaken, but I doubt if it was like craft rubber stamping, especially in 1994. If you told me like 2000 and whatever, you know, I could see that. But uh, yeah, here's Art Stampers Exhibition Germany and put on by Hein Design right there. Northwest Rubber Stampers Expo, Mars Guild, Male Artisan and Rubber Stamps. That's Mars Guild. I always heard that was a really fantastic show put on by uh, Tisha Moore, I believe. Um, let's see here. The UK show. Best Little Stamp Show in Texas. Never heard of that one. San Antonio. There was a holiday rubber stamp show in Davis. I'm not, I'm not sure what that one was. So marking the first 30,000 years. So I don't know. I guess he's making his mark down here. Kind of engraving, I guess. Not really stamping. <laughs> but uh, here's different books, sources on uh, rubber stamps. Um, how to make books with children, Alex stamping. So a lot of Alex stamping books, I guess. Um, good stamp, stamp good. Stamping around with Emily Good. Huh. Uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers right here um, for their um, self, you know, self-published uh, things right here. Here's magazine titles right here. Look at this, Eraser Quarter Carver's Quarterly. That's pretty interesting right there. Um, National Stamper Graphic, Rubber Art, Rubber Stamp Madness, Rubber Stamper's World, Rubber Stamp and Retailer, uh, Rebus Quarterly, Stempelinus, Norwegian Magazine, three per year, The Rubber Fanzine, The Official Rubber Stampers, The Official rub Stampers Rubber Stamp Handbook. Uh, hmm. And there's some videos here. Not too many videos at the time being uh, produced, but um, I don't know, there's some down here that I didn't know about. I didn't know Good Stamp Stamp Goods had one. Everyone always wanted me to produce a, you know, a how-to video, and I, I could, you know, I could have, but it, it costs so much to do um, if you wanted to do it kind of more professionally. Anderson Vreeland right here, uh, Vulcanizers right here. Look at this, rubber stamping clubs right here. Wow. How, did, how does this publication find out about these types of things? I, oh, I don't know. Maybe they looked in the back of Rubber Stamp Madness or something like that. But I don't know. How, wherever they got their information, you know, I got to put my tip my hat to them on how they got that. Look at this right here. So not really the target audience for, uh, you know, these types of, uh, you know, business types of uh, rubber stamps right here, but I don't know, I guess they got them to take out an ad, so pretty interesting. Mark Enterprises here, um, retailers and wholesalers, embossing powder and tinsel, glue, glitter, and more. 
those things were, you know, really big back then. We got to bring these uh, embossing and glitters back into the mix, you know. There's a reason why these things were so popular at one time. It's because people really loved them. People like kind of like bling and, uh, I don't know, watching those embossing powders rise. And you know what I mean? It makes for a kind of a really cool process. Ranger Industries right here. This is pre, you know whatever, designers type of thing, pre-Tim Holtz and everything like that. They just made their own kind of inks and things like that. It wasn't like a embossing pad by, you know, a certain designer's line or something like that. So I hadn't heard about them at this time. I think that, I, I don't remember their first line of pads. It was probably a little bit more industrial and kind of geared more towards the general crafting market as opposed to targeting specifically um, rubber stampers it was probably like more like school types of things, but they were more of the industrial types of uh, inks, I believe. That's how they started. And then, you know, the paper arts came out and that became kind of the more of their uh, main focus in there. But, um, you know, you might buy like a Ranger ink that was uh, made that people would be indexing their um, wood mounted stamps with on the top or something like that. I think I did have a Ranger, one type of Ranger ink for that. Um, but anyways, Art Stampers Worldwide, uh, publication right there. So anyways, so now there's record of it and a little bit of a flip through whoever produced this. Uh, I don't know. They didn't even, they don't even have any information as far as I can see. I did a little Google search on it and I didn't find anything. So anyways, just wanted to get that out there in terms of a little bit of rubber stamping history. All right. Thanks for watching.